Salman Al Ansari joins me from Riyadh. He is the founder and president of the Washington, D.C. based Saudi American Public Relations Affairs Committee. And I want to ask you about Saudi Aramco. The company says that it will reportedly sign a $50 billion uh, uh, worth of deals with the United States. How does that really gel with the kingdom's desire to reduce oil dependency? Great. Hi, Tatiana, and hi to all the viewers of TRT World around the globe. Um, it's definitely a, a very remarkable uh, economic uh, partnership deals with the United States. And as, a, as you all can see, that the Trump's visit to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has a very strategic uh, importance, not only to the region, but to the whole world when it comes to economic stability, when it comes to global security, and different themes as well. So when it comes to Aramco, it's, um, as we have seen, like there are 17 U.S. Uh, Corporation that will be uh, dealing in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in different sectors, specifically on the field of energy. Saudi Arabia, as we all know, that it has the biggest uh, 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 or the second biggest oil reserve in the world, and it's the biggest oil uh, producer in the world. At the same time, it has a lot of potential when it comes to its petro petrochemical uh, industry, because Saudi actually, uh, with, the, with the partnership of the United States, are building right now uh, the biggest petrochemical complex in the whole world that cost 20.6 billion dollars. So we are speaking of um, a very remarkable um, uh, economic partnerships that will take the Saudi-US relationship to a completely new level. So we are really hopeful that um, um, uh, that the Vision 2030, the Saudi Vision 2030, as we all know it, because it actually focuses a lot on economic diversification. So we are actually right now in a position where we would love to see the United States to come and not only uh, uh, sell to us what they have, but to basically transfer the knowledge, transfer the technology, transfer the know-how, the know-how to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in all fields, either in energy, either on um, um, uh, technology or in any uh, or information technology, etc. So we are very uh, optimistic about this visit, to be honest. Trump's visit to the kingdom is not only a visit uh, uh, that is uh, uh, just symbolic. No, it's a visit that actually there to, to, to create a new momentum, uh, to, to, to open a new page with the whole Arab and Muslim world. So we can tell that the United States is very keen to strengthen the U.S.-Saudi relationship and take it to another level. So you talked about the idea that uh, people there are, are welcoming U.S. President Donald Trump. But given Trump's previous anti-Islamic statements, how much trepidation do you suppose there will be as Saudi officials watch him speak and listen to what he has to say? Okay, great. Actually, Senator uh, John McCain um, two to three weeks ago said something remarkable. He said, do not... Um, uh, look at uh, Trump's rhetoric, look at his actions. So uh, it's actually very important. And at the same time, um, um, uh, Trump actually did not only uh, uh, um, had like some uh, negative comments on, on the kingdom or, or on the world, etc. It's actually almost like every part, like even the NATO members had some kind of issues with, 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 with some of the Trump's rhetoric in the past during the campaign, etc. So I don't think we should take it so personally at the moment. We are right now speaking of more a strategic kind of partnership. We actually we can see that the Trump's administration is very pragmatic. James Mattis, Jared Kushner, uh, McMaster, um, everyone you can tell is very aware of the dynamics and geopolitical challenges in the region, in the Middle East, and they know that the root of terrorism is basically the sectarian uh, practices of the radical Iranian regime. That in itself is a very good um, uh, uh, start point uh, for the U.S.-Saudi uh, relationship because it's very important for the for the for the for the a region to have uh, a United States that is very aware of who is actually destabilizing the region, who is actually spreading their militias. We, they have actually more than 75 radical militias just in Iraq and supported completely by the IRGC uh, of Iran. So uh, I think this uh, summit, the three summits, will actually create more consensus between the United States and the whole Arab and Muslim world, and at the same time, Riyadh will not be only the capital of, of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, but will be basically uh, uh, the capital of the Arab and Muslim world. And also, Riyadh will be the capital and cornerstone of the efforts of combating terrorism. And at the same time, it will be the capital of economic uh, um, uh, 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 shifts and, and changes and, and, and transformations in the region. 
And, and quickly, um, I want to ask you about Yemen. How much are U.S. and Saudi leaders looking forward to narrowing their differences when it comes to that topic? I think when it comes to Yemen, it's actually, we can tell that it's, uh, it's almost like um, going to be ending very, very soon because more than 85 percent of uh, the Yemeni territories are actually have been liberated from the, from the Iranian-backed militias, the Houthis. So that in itself is a good thing. So all what we need right now is basically to have more uh, pressure from the, definitely, the United States can definitely help on putting more pressure on, uh, um, um, uh, on Saleh and, and, and the Houthis and also put more pressure on their sponsors, uh, that in itself will, 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 will pave the way and speed up the process of having more of a political solution for Sana'a. But in any way, if the political uh, uh, decisions or discussion would not uh, result in anything, then I think the military force will, will, will speed up the process and definitely have uh, Yemen to be back to the legitimate government uh, according to uh, the, the, the United Nations Resolution uh, 2216. So I think um, Yemen, I don't think we really have to worry a lot about, about this. Definitely it's a catastrophe like what the Houthis and Saleh have done, what the Iranian-backed militias have done. It's very uh, unfortunate that they were actually attacking uh, 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 the, the people in, in, in Yemen through through al Houthis and Saleh, etc. But uh, I think Saudi is on the right track to basically um, um, uh, get the Houthis out uh, of Sana'a and, and also part of Ta'az and also Sa'da. So I think 85% of Yemen is liberated. I think 15% will not take that long to be liberated too. And I believe that the United States is actually very keen to support the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and to support the Arab coalition to speed up the process because um, 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 any war, we all know that any war is easy to Certainly. start but, but difficult to end. Um, but at the same time, uh, we really need to uh, have Yemen back to the legitimate government and to uh, help the people to have access to humanitarian uh, aids to all the Yemeni people uh, disregarding um, um, uh, their tribe or disregarding their, their, their region. Salmani El Ansari, I, I want to thank you for this uh, perspective.